Hi and a very good morning. My name is Nusha Zana Binti Abdullah. I'm from class 22A, group 3, English General Communications. So today, I'm uh, reviewing a book and the title is Sin to the Dawn by Ming Fong Ho. Uh, this book publication dates in 1975. So uh, my first time um, with uh, this book when I'm from 5. So uh, Sin to the Dawn uh, is a short story by Ming Fong Ho later expanded into a novel. The original story was awarded first prize by the Council of Interracial Boots uh, for Children and the novel was adapted into a musical stage production. So, uh, the plot summary of this book is um, about uh, Dawan, a young girl who lives in a Thailand at Bangkok, um, gets uh, first place in examinations and wins a scholarship to study in a city. Uh, and her brother Kwai uh, places second uh, in the examinations and is initially um, jealous. So it's uh, creating a rift between uh, two previously uh, close siblings. However, Tawan's father, who feels uh, that the city is no place uh, for a girl and that Dawan should give uh, the scholarship to Kwai and let him go uh, to the city instead of her. Dawan faces major obstacles at every turn and eventually overcomes these obstacles and proves to herself and others that she is fully capable of handling the scholarship and responsibility it entails. But she faces his approval of her father, who is convinced that the city life is further schooling are not for a girl. Tawan this determination to overcome these obstacles and to prove to herself as as well as others that she is worthy of seeking the prize is an important experience for her and her readers. So uh, the story begins with Dawan, a young girl living in a rural village in Thailand who wake up every day early in the morning. She sneaks out of the house to enjoy the morning air and finds her brother Kwai sitting on the nearby bridge. The siblings see and talk about upcoming announcement of an academic scholarship which will enable uh, students from the village to go to school in the city. So, Dawan asks Kwai what he will do if he wins the scholarships. She does not believe she will get the scholarship because she is a girl. When they return home, they see beds of rice stacked up against the house, intended as payment of the family stats, and Dawan remarks how unfair it is. When Dawan asks her father, asks her parents uh, about the scholarship, they tell her it is a waste of time to send girls to school. At school, Dawan is more interested in conversing with students than teaching. They discuss the landlord taking away rice from the families until the headmaster arrives, prom prompting the teacher to pretend to teach a class until he leaves. She then asks Dawan what she would do if she won the scholarship. Dawan doesn't know, and is shocked when the teacher announced that, in fact, Dawan has won it. The other students all gather around Dawan and cheer, except Kwai, who is upset. Kwai has come in second to his sister, and he believes he should have won. They go home, and Dawan tells her parents that she has won the scholarship. Instead of being excited for her, their father is so angry, and tells Dawan that she has stolen the scholarship from her own brother. Only Dawan's grandmother is supportive, and she suggests they talk to her cousin, Noi, and ask her to help change Dawan's father's mind. Dawan's mother decides to take Dawan to see Noi. Noi and her husband, Gan, however, are not supportive. 
Noy tells Dawan that the city is no place for a young girl. Gan is accosted by an army officer who demands bribes to ensure that Khan is not drafted into the army. Dawan contemplates an, the unfairness of the society and wishes to understand better in order to create a better world. Her mother advises her to accept her lot in life, but Dawan does not believe she can. Walking home, Dawan sees Kwai following and lets her mother go on alone. Kwai tells Dawan that if she turns down the scholarship, he will get it and urge her to do so, telling her that she is not cut out for it. Dawan refuses, knowing that their father will send Kwai to school no matter what, but that is her only chance, and for a moment, their relationship seems doomed. But Kwai relents and they make a joke and are friends again. Kwai does not tell their father about paying a second place in order to protect Dawan's chance. At dinner, Dawan's father remains convinced that educating a girl is pointless. Dawan tries to think of someone who her father would listen to and thinks of the old monk at the village temple. She goes to the market to purchase a tribute for the monk. A peddler named Bao gives her a lotus pot and refuses payment for it. Dawan likes her and tells her about her quest. Dawan reveals that Kwai was the only one taught her father into letting her attend school at all, and Bao reveals that her own brother is more like Dawan's father and would never allow her to go to school. Bao wants Dawan that the old monk rarely takes sides in anything. The old monk already knows that Dawan won the scholarship and that Kwai came in second. Dawan asks him to speak with her father. The monk, however, argue that since all the mortal life comes to nothing, it is not worth pursuing her goals and urge her to find everything that she needs in the temple. Dawan leaves angry, but at the market, Bao sees that Dawan is upset and allows her to set a sparrow free its cage. Bao's brother, Vichai, comes and beats her for setting a valuable bird free. Bao begins setting all the birds free, arranging her brother who is restrained by Kwai. When Kwai realizes that Bao knows about his situation, he moves to be her as well, but Dawan restrains him, getting injured in the process. She tells Kwai his pretensions of helping the needy are false, since he won't help her. Noi arrives to help Dawan turn her wounds. Returning home, Dawan sees Kwai by the river struggling with his desire for the scholarship and his belief that Dawan should get to go. At home, their father has learned that Kwai came in second and is furious. They argue and Kwai tells their father that he will not steal Dawan's chance and will refuse the scholarship even if Dawan is forced to turn it down. Her father is finally convinced and tells Dawan she can take the scholarship. The next morning, Kwai is very upset and tells Dawan life will not be the same when she leaves. Dawan begs him to keep singing their song every morning. The next day when Dawan leaves for school in the city, the village turns out to see her off and her father wishes her well, but Kwai is not there and Dawan is sad. As the bus drives by the bridge, however, Kwai is there, singing to her. She joins him and heads off. So that's all for my review. Thank you. Bye.